good evening everyone and welcome to this session of uh, conceptual orthopedics uh today we'll be discussing about bosworth fracture dislocation <clears throat> so bosworth ankle fracture dislocation is what we'll be discussing with today uh if you ask me why this talk well this this topic has been asked as a five mark question a uh, few years back i mean it was quite some regular question that was asked few years back but of late it was not been asked um uh, but there is a chance that uh, this this can be asked in your uh, uh, oski especially when they ask this because this is one typical entity on which a lot of questions can be based upon so that's why i felt whether that when we have covered uh, such in depth about ankle fracture dislocations we need to cover this also so that uh, in case it comes we do not uh, feel that uh, never heard of it right so it's a pretty thing simple thing what uh, there is one more interesting story to this what happened was we had this uh, patient few days back a couple of weeks back a young lady who had a fall off a staircase and presented to us uh, with this particular fracture she presented in the uh, late evening i might say somewhere about 9 9 10 pm and uh, the resident called me and asked uh, that what to be done next and uh, so it was told trimalar fracture dislocation right so i just told reduce it and put a slab and get a repeat x ray you should be able to reduce it now uh, the repeat x ray is this and the resident was not able to reduce it so what next what the protocol in our institute is that if a trimalar fracture dislocation is irreducible uh, by closed manners we plan for a external fixator because uh, in a slab in a mal reduced position the swelling will not come down uh, early and medial side as we can say it is tenting the skin so that can give rise to soft tissue uh, issues the skin issues on the medial side so it is much safer to put on a external fixator and wait for the swelling to subside so that being said it was posted in the middle of the night and the residents did put a external fixator uh, but next day they told that it was very very difficult to reduce and this is what they got with, even with great difficulty right so the moment this x ray was seen i was taken taken aback in the sense it is not that difficult to reduce a trimalar fracture dislocation so immediately what struck was this may be bosworth now bosworth as an entity we have all read in the books but it's a very 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 rare entity that you might not uh, see it uh, that often at all right so in, in your entire residency you might not see one at all and then suddenly when you're uh, treating the patients the first case that you might come across may be this okay so that is why this particular uh, topic has been discussed today and highlighted so that we do not miss this injury cause uh, things are pretty different compared to any other fracture dislocation so now uh when we look at this the ankle is not at reduced it is subluxated we might say but it is not perfectly back in its position and things are not looking good so immediately we recognized that this is bosworth and we asked for a ct the ct did show us that now this is the distal tibia and this is the fibula and this is the incisura incisura means this is the distal tibia fibula joint now as we can see the entire incisura is empty the fibula is lying totally outside the incisura and is lying posterior to the distal part of tibia this is anterior and this is posterior so fibula the proximal part uh, at the fracture side is lying posterior to the fibula the entire incisura is empty this is very very typical of a bosworth fracture dislocation okay so this is a, a 3d image for better understanding we can see that the fibula has gone yes has gone out of the incisura and gone behind the tibia now this is called the posterior tibial tubercle now this particular uh, entity is what uh, uh, prevents reduction of this fibula back into its native location okay so this is bosworth fracture dislocation so it was described way back in 1947 the all, it is also called as irreducible fracture dislocation so in case in the exam they ask you about irreducible fracture dislocation of an ankle it is nothing but a bosworth fracture dislocation okay so the thing is the proximal fibula shaft uh, goes behind the posterior part of the tibia so it gets locked behind the posterior tibial tubercle uh, what is the mechanism of injury now this is uh, there have been many studies on this now since this is an extremely rare injury only anecdotal evidences uh, are there to tell what it is but uh, more and more authors do agree that it is an extreme degree of external rotation so when we have a supination external rotation injury in that if the external rotation injury is very extreme then we get this type of a bosworth fracture dislocation so supination external rotation means we have an oblique fracture of the lateral malleoli uh, we have uh, we can i mean it starts at the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament then it goes to the lateral malleoli causing an oblique fracture then it goes to the posterior malleoli 
causing either a fracture or a ligamentous injury and then it goes to the medial side causing deltoid ligamentous injury or a, a medial malar fracture so if there is a significant external rotation uh, component then there can be a bosford fracture dislocation is what has been uh, thought of right so there has to be an extreme of uh, external rotation so there are two types in bosford fracture dislocation the one is that it can have a fracture and one is that it can be a pure dislocation in the sense there is no fracture happening it is only supination complete external rotation extremes of that so the entire fibula gets dislocated behind the tibia this is still rarer more rarer than a fracture dislocation but there are reports of these uh, in literature and we need to be aware of this uh, this entity also okay now this is a typical fracture dislocation as we can see the fibula is totally posterior to the uh, distal tibia and uh, this is a type of irreducible fracture dislocation whereas in this case as we can see there is no fracture of the lateral malli whereas uh, the entire lateral malli has gone behind the tibia there is a dislocation of the ankle joint and uh, this gets entrapped at the posterior tibial tubercle so this is without fracture the first one was with fracture so both of these are called bosworth dislocations if this is a fracture it is called bosworth fracture dislocation how do we diagnose this entity now thing is we do come across ankle injuries very very commonly and how is it that we should not miss this entity yes it is rare but then these need to be uh, at, the, at the back of our minds whenever we treat an ankle injury so what do we do uh, look carefully on the ap x ray on the left what we see is a typical uh, fracture dislocation whereas on the right uh, i mean on the left is a typical um, by your trimalar fracture dislocation on the right what we see is a bosworth fracture okay so remember that on our left hand side we are dealing with a regular supination external rotation um, by or trimalar ankle fracture whereas on the right we are having a bosworth fracture so on an ap what you need to see is what is happening to the fibula and the tibia so at the fracture level so you can see some space now that is because there is an interosseous membrane between tibia and the fibula whereas on the on the bosworth fracture this both overlap why is that why does that happen because this fibula pierces the interosseous and goes posteriorly okay so the gap between the tibia and the fibula reduces uh, on an ap this is a very subtle sign that uh, if you keep seeing uh, and we might recognize pretty early but more importantly what we can easily not uh, see on or recognize by is by seeing in the lateral view same on the left side we have a tri uh, trimalar fracture dislocation on the right side we have a bosworth fracture uh, understand what is happening to the proximal fibula in relationship to the tibia okay so in a by or a trimalar fracture dislocation the interosseous membrane more or less is intact so tibia and fibula go together right so here we can see that the tibia and fibula are overlapping whereas in this there is a clear cut gap between now this both of these are true lateral we are not talking of an oblique view over here in a true lateral when you see the dislocation we can see that there is a clear gap between the tibia and the fibula so the fibula is not going with the tibia whereas it is going posterior to the tibia because it has already pierced the interosseous membrane it is not taking along with it whereas it is going back so this is one uh, sure shot sign to tell that yes this may be a bosworth fracture and something more needs to be done okay also there is uh, this so called axilla sign now this is a very controversial sign it, it was described way back in 90s now there are enough uh, papers which have come off late telling that this particular sign uh, is uh, is uh, not uh, not sensitive in the sense there are a lot of uh, lot, lot of false positive cases in the sense lot of cases are there in which you do not see this sign at all okay what is this axilla we can see a flake of bone over here now this is typical of bosworth is what this paper told Uh, this happens because the entire distal tibia is internally rotated uh, and it is locked nearly locked in internal rotation so you can see that the uh, anteromedial part of the tibial tubercle uh, which looks like a flake of bone there okay so not a very not a very specific sign uh, but uh, it might be asked in oski so all these signs names and and other part of oski question so we should be aware of that that it is called an axilla sign and if present um it tells us that there is a bosworth fracture dislocation uh but more specific and more easier to recognize would be by having a ct like told before very typical uh, try to get ct of both the ankle uh, ankles not necessary for bosworth but 